This video concentrates on the settings you should be aware of if you are flying a 7 inch quad. If you are looking for the full INAV setup guide for the FPV drone, there is a link to the playlist in the description. Yes, I know this is for the INAV 4, but there are not that many changes in terms of the settings for the multi rotor between INAV 4 and INAV 6. You should be absolutely golden with that, no problem. At all. The first screen that you should see after successfully flashing INAV6 is the default values dialog. Here is my advice. Do not restore INAV5 or INAV4 div when upgrading to INAV6. We have improved a few defaults, added a few features and if you will just upgrade from the previous div you might not get the full performance out of your drone. Especially because now there is a new preset designed especially for the 7 inch drones. It's here. See it? So let's just click it, apply the default preset and let's tune from here. Let's begin with the new options that are available in the receiver tab. First of all we have the new RC smoothing option which allows you to have dynamic smoothing applied. It's especially important for the radio links that are using a dynamic refresh rate like for example crossfire. My advice is to set it to on, then the manual LPF HZ is no longer used and use only auto smoothing factor to set up the smoothing in the way that satisfies your flying needs. If you want the smoother response to the stick movement then you should increase the auto smoothing factor but if you want less smooth, well more direct feeling, especially this is useful for the racing situations, then you should lower the auto smoothing factor. The default auto smoothing factor of 30 is a nice compromise between having a smooth flying experience and well relatively rapid response. The next setting we should change is the RC deadband. The default deadband of 5 is well let's say fine for the rather older and used up gimbals. With the new filtering in place we can safely lower this setting. My recommendation is actually not to move it down to zero. Why? Because there will always be some jitter on the RC channels. And having this teeny tiny RC deadband actually might slightly help you to have a smoother flight performance. My personal recommendation is to set this value to 2 for both RC deadband and the Yo deadband. However, if you would like to have the most rapid response possible, just set it to 0. INAV6 default 7 inch preset already set up majority of the settings for you. They by default will have values that are optimized for the 7 inch FPV drones. Both freestyle long range cruisers you you name it. However, depending on your build, you will from time to time have to adjust some of them, especially PID gains and filtering. The most interesting setting you can set on the rates and expo are well exactly the rates. Default 7 inch preset sets the rates to 700 on both roll and pitch and 600 on yo. This is a nice compromise and if you know how to fly you should be happy with them and if you do not really know how to fly well they should still be manageable. However if you feel that your drone is rotating too fast then you might try to lower the rates. I personally do not recommend going below 500 on the roll and the pitch and below 400 on your because well how to tell it your skills will improve quite fast. If you lower the rates too much, at one point they will start to limit your progression. Something that might be worth updating is also max roll angle and the pitch angles. Those are the angles that will be used during the navigation modes and the angle and horizon modes. By default we use third modern drones should be able to use 45 degrees of inclination. Absolutely not a problem. This video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel 
channel members. Thank you guys, you're the main reason this channel keeps going and I have the motivation to record tutorials like this. If you're not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. And yeah, you will get some special benefits out of that deal. Then let's go to filters. And here in the filters tab, there are a few changes. First of all, there is the dynamic gyro LPF that allows iNav to change the cutoff frequency on the main gyro filter depending on the throttle position. It's a nice feature that allows iNav to track the peak frequencies and adjust the main gyro LPF frequency depending on how fast the motors are rotating. You just have to enable this and set the mean and max frequencies when the mean will be with the lowest throttle position and the max of course with the highest throttle position. However, my recommendation is that do not enable this by default. The reason is quite simple. You have to know the noise distribution based on the throttle position. And to have this information, you have to use the black box lock and do the full throttle sweep. In this specific case, we should not gaze the mean and max values for the dynamic gyro LPF. It's better to stick with the default static for the first flights. Then during one of the flights, record the black box lock and then adjust the dynamic LPF accordingly. But this is not a topic for this video. We will cover that in the separate video in the future. So for the time being, let's leave dynamic gyro LPF off and only concentrate on the main gyro filter cutoff frequency. The default frequency of 90 Hz should be fine for all 7 inch multi rotor drones. If your drone makes a buzzing sound, has the problem with keeping altitude, even when the altitude hold is off or in general is extremely twitchy or the motors are getting hot, the main gyro LPF is the first setting that you should adjust. How much? depends on your build. Like I mentioned, the default 90 Hz should work in the majority of the cases. If you have problems with noise, hot motors and other noise related problems, then you might try lowering even down to 80 Hz. However, I recommend not to go below 80 Hz because then the phase delay on the gyro will grow and the there will be a price to pay. It's a much better idea to solve the problem at the root by getting rid of the vibrations than lowering the main LPF too much. And do not lower this value without first trying to get rid of the problem by, for example, putting a new propellers, putting a motors that do not have bended shafts and in general getting rid of the hardware source of the vibrations. Next we have the advanced gyro filter with the new setting matrix filter type which defaults to the 3D version. On 7 inch builds my recommendation is to leave it at the 3D option. In 3D configuration the matrix filter will attach the additional notch filter for each axis to try to fight with the vibrations that got through the first layer of the notch filters. In case of my 7 inch drones the progress of the noise reduction and cooling down the motors were just incredible. Just by setting this to the 3D, the ESCs got colder by 10 degrees Celsius and I was able to push the D gains for approximately 20% more than before. So leave it at default 3D. Unless you have a super smooth 100% perfect ideal 7 inch frame and the propellers and the motors that do not vibrate at all and only then you might try going back to the 2D option on the matrix filter type. 
I also do not recommend to modify the next three settings. Matrix filter mean frequency, matrix filter Q factor and unicorn filter Q factor. Just leave them at defaults, they are already correctly tuned. Only if you want to and you do not have any problems with vibrations, noise and other gyro signal related problems, to raise the unicorn filter Q factor, maybe even up to 300. But absolutely not before checking out how it's flying on the faults. And then there are the D-term filters, or rather D-term filter. Right now, by default, INAV is using only a single D-term LPF, which is set into the PT2 option. So in fact, the single low-pass filter acts as a two stacked together low-pass filters. If you want to, you can change it using the CLI, by my recommendation, is to actually stick with the default setting on the PT2 and only to adjust the single D-term LPF. If you would like to change that, which one more time I do not really recommend, in the description of the video you will find the names of the CLI settings that will allow you to change the type of the D-term filter 1 and the D-term filter 2 to set them to either PT1, PT2 or PT3. But by default, let's just stick with the single PT2 D-term LPF. This value is usually correlated with the main gyro LPF cutoff frequency. And my recommendation is to set it approximately 10 Hz below the main gyro filter. So if in our case the main gyro filter is at 80, you should set the D-term LPF to around 70. If however we are using default 90, then we can go back into the default 80 for the D-term LPF cutoff. And finally the gyro RPM. The recommendation for INAV6 is to leave the gyro LPM filters off just like they are by default. The combination of the matrix and the unicorn filter really does a great job of keeping your gyro single nice and relatively smooth. Works like a charm. And then let's go to the mechanics tab. Over here my recommendation is to leave majority of the settings by default. Over here the only value that actually might need adjusting is the trust PID attenuation. If your 7 inch behaves great on the low throttle but starts to vibrate on the high throttle, that means that probably you will have to slightly attenuate the PIDs on the high throttle. This can be achieved by the TPA breakpoint and the thrust pit attenuation percent and usually the only value that you will really have to adjust is the attenuation percent. But this should be adjusted only when you are getting some vibration vibrations on the high throttle. Then you might want to rise the PID attenuation until the high throttle vibrations will well just be attenuated. But the best way to do it is with the help of the black box lock to exactly know how the noise response and the PID response based on the throttle position looks like on your build. Let's try to avoid changing settings without understanding on what exactly they do on your build. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!